Welcome to the Investing Podcast presented by Tusk Media. This is Outsider Trading, an audio and video deep dive into the people, places, and things that we find most interesting in the market. Uh, hello, welcome back to the Investing Podcast. I'm Ben Naim with uh, Matt Kresbach. Uh, he also, he's also known as the unit yep. around the office and also on his Movember page. Mm -hmm. um, so we are doing a promotion for men's health. All proceeds go to men's health issues. Uh, you can just follow us on Twitter. Go to, go to the Movember website and donate to us. So the winner of the, the contest, actually the winner doesn't really get much. It's the loser who's dissuaded from losing. So right now I think... I'm in last place. You're a loser. I have so, no money. So yeah, an anonymous admirer gave me fifty dollars. So got that going for me, which is nice. Yeah, it is nice. Um, <laughs> so first up, we wanted to talk about first solar and give a preview of the uh -huh. earnings. Um, so obviously, this is a company that has been incredibly hard hit by declining and in, in declines in solar prices. Just kind of this glut mm -hmm. of solar wafers that have been put on the market, and they are purported to have a technology edge, but we're not seeing that in gross margin. Um, and we've seen just continual gro gross margin declines, and it looks like they're gonna have a gross margin decline next year. Mm -hmm. And that's what analysts are all afraid about. That's why the stock has gone from, what, 55 to 30? It's even like 70. Right. I mean, it's just <laughs> straight down, baby. It's crazy. So, <laughs> so, so what's the underlying thesis for a company like First Solar? Like why, why would you want to buy a stock like this? Well, first off, it's not just First Solar, it's really just the solar industry in general. Like if you look at other, other companies that I liked at the time were like Canadian Solar, Jinko Solar, like companies like that, it's not just First Solar. But First Solar, why I like them better um, than the other companies, uh, they have by far the best balance sheet. Like if you look at, I think their tangible book value is like $55 wow. compared to tr market price of like 40, let's say, I don't know what it is exactly, but let's say 40, and net cash was like $14 a share. They also have projects like under construction with like worth 1.7 billion, which is another like $15 a share, if you think that's full right. value. But um, they also have different technology. They have the cadmium telluride. I'm, yeah. I'm saying that right. right? I, I, think, I think that's a bad as well <laughs> as I go down. So like they, they make it with a different technology than what all the other major solar manufacturers do, which is they make it out of silicon. Right. And silicon prices have just been tanking, so they can those companies can make their solar panels cheaper. Mm -hmm. But um, First Solar can't really do that. They can't match it since they use different material. But they have a clear roadmap to have to lower costs. Right, going forward. So if you can, <laughs> go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, do you think that the China dumping like all of this is, is that still an issue? I know at one point there was an issue that China was just dumping all this solar mm -hmm. and, and silicon into the U.S. market. Is that right. still an issue? I still, I still think it is, yeah. And I driving mean, those prices lower. Right, going through 2017, 2017 is going to be rough. I think everyone knows it's going to be rough. Um, if you can, like, look past 2017, if you can, like, accept that earnings per share are going to drop, gross margin for all, for solar especially, but every solar manufacturer is going to be bad, I, I think it's, like, an interesting play. Yeah, and I, especially because the book that, like I said, you have like a kind of floor. I guess it did get to like thirty-four. So, right, but, but you also have as part of that book value, a lot of that's in cash. Mm -hmm. um, they have they have many dollars of per share in cash. Mm -hmm. I want to say well, well more than ten dollars a share in cash. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just sitting on the balance sheet. And the thing about First Solar is they clearly like, believe in their technology because I think a couple months ago they closed one of their uh, silicon manufacturing plants in I think Taiwan. It was. So they're going all in on their technology, which I think is like the best move, or is a smart right. move on their part. Yeah, do you, so if, if we're looking at First Solar, it oftentimes, it's, it seems like it's always, well, look, at, look to next year, look mm -hmm. to three years out, and it's always kind of, it's per, in perpetual three years out. So right. like in 2013, they were saying, look three years out, in 2016, and now look where we are. I mean, it's not much progress. And that's another thing why I think they've traded down so hard, because they never give guidance. Right. Like, I mean, everyone wants to see what they're what they're going to say for twenty seventeen, but they haven't given anything yet. I think they say they're going to do it in December. I want to say, yeah, I think they yeah. did it last year, or maybe people are, like analysts expect that to happen in December. But um, going up like up until now, we have no idea what they're expecting to do. It's the type of thing that if they want, if they gave guidance, 
it would probably be good guidance at this right. point because you know otherwise they they're just going to continue to mm -hmm. underperform. They're not going to tell the market that they're going to do worse than mm -hmm. than uh, than they are doing right now. And with, with the projects on their books, if if you assume like they, those like PPAs were signed. Back. PPAs mean uh, purchase power agreements with okay. like utilities or yeah typically utilities. Um, if you assume that those were signed when rates were higher, when like energy <coughs> prices were higher, that they would have a higher gross margin when they sell those projects. Um, if they actually sell those or like drop down into their yield co, oh, this is getting pretty deep. Yeah. If they if they drop down their yield co model, um, they could sell them. They could get like recognize really high EPS instantly, like for the year almost. Right. Which is kind of a so it seems to me so what so the way first solar constructed this and really Sun Edison uh, which is now bankrupt uh, <laughs> yeah they are Sun, Sun, Sun Edison was a pioneer in this space they they have these yield yeah. codes um, so what would happen is and we're simplifying a little bit because yeah. first solar and Sun Power did an agreement mm -hmm. um, combined to have a joint yield co but in in just broad strokes what happens is the solar company the really the manufacturer. Um, has is, is the manufacturer of these, and they and they also create the demand. So they go out and sign agreements, and then once they have that agreement, then they sell that agreement to the drop down company. So mm -hmm. a separate company that first solar created. In this case, it's CAFD, right? Yeah. CAFD is a symbol. Um, so they will sell that project, that PPA to CAFD now and then CAFD will pay them first of all will realize a margin at mm -hmm. that point mm -hmm. and they'll also benefit on the on the back end through mm -hmm. um, IDR uh, through and, and just their ownership in it right so so first solar will receive a margin at that initial point mm -hmm. the problem is when CAFD has been sold off so much they have less capital with which they can actually buy these mm -hmm. uh, projects so if all of a sudden CAFD's dividend yield is 15%, they have to raise equity at a very expensive price. Right, they, and the they period is destroying value at that Exactly. Point. So what you have is CAFD wants to pay less, which means First Solar is getting hit on the margin, which is why you're seeing gross margin decline so much. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at this, so they report tomorrow. Right. When you look at their report, what are you looking for in, in terms of we know it's a long-term story, but how do you start to get more confidence around the long-term story that this thesis will play out based on what they report tomorrow? Is there anything that they can say that will say, you know, they actually know what they're doing and it may take three years, it may take four years, it may take five years, but they're going to get to where they want to be? Obviously, you want to see more clarity, but I don't think they're going to give much um, in terms of like like balance sheet income statement, like that type of thing, I'm clearly looking for at gross margin to see like how bad it is. Right. <laughs> I don't, they, they probably will give guidance on gross margin and I'll see that like for the next quarter at least, you know. But um, yeah, to see like how bad gross margin is because I think it's unanimously going to be lower than what it was right. year over year. Um, Do analysts like the stock? I mean, what are, what are the, what's the They used saying? to love it. I mean, I remember, I remember looking at it on Bloomberg, it was like 20, 20 buys, like one sell. Right. And now it's, I think it's closer to like even. Like you see a lot more like neutral rated and uh, a few, I kind a few of view that as a positive sign. Right. I mean, when when the street right, right, right. doesn't like a stock, I mean that means like kind of it's all washed out, and mm -hmm. that's when the smart money starts stock mm -hmm. starts to come in. So I guess you can hope for a little bit of that. I mean, at, when did it get to like thirty four? Yeah, that was, um, I think that was around the low. When, when it got to around thirty four, it was universally hated. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hated it. I have full disclosure. <laughs> um, <laughs> So um, and, and like all the things that I'll be looking at specifically are if they give any clarity on their plans to sign the projects, the Maropa, Myopa and State Line projects, if they're going to sell them sooner or later, like if they're going to drop them down sooner or later. I think that's really important in terms of EPS for this the rest of, it, the rest of this year and next year. Right. All right. Anything else? I, I think that's well, you got well, 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 watch that qualitative commentary. Conference calls, again, probably far more important than mm -hmm. the... Really, some yeah. this, in, in this case, so um, make sure make sure you're on that. Make sure you read the transcript. Seeking Alpha often has transcripts mm -hmm. up. Uh, give us a like on Twitter. Follow us, and uh, we'll we'll be back for more. Thanks.
Tusk Media is a subsidiary of Narwhal Capital Management. Ratings and reviews of Tusk Media content are not to be construed as endorsements of opinions, analysis, or services offered by Tusk or its parent company. The opinions and predictions shared here are our professional beliefs at the time of publication. We are not under duress from any of the corporate entities mentioned. This is not a solicitation to take any particular action. Although we are investment advisors, this information should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. We strive to be as impartial, insightful, and accurate as possible. We base our opinions, analysis, and calculations on information we believe to be reliable, but we cannot guarantee its accuracy. We can, however, guarantee that our opinions will sometimes be flat out wrong due to a variety of factors. Employees and clients of Narwhal Capital Management may or may not hold positions in the securities detailed and may or may not hold these positions in the future. A full list of all securities purchased, sold, or held during the 12 months preceding the date of this publication can be provided upon request. Unless otherwise noted, all data accessed via MarketWatch or the Bloomberg Terminal. Past performance does not guarantee future results. A copy of Narwhal's form ADV is available at the SEC's website, www.advisorinfo.sec.gov, or from Narwhal upon written request.